Disclaimer. The following review is on a game based in Mythic China, and many of the game's terms reflect this. While I pride myself on having a strong sense of pronunciation, I cannot guarantee I'll have the best ones here. If I say a name or term wrong here, I apologize in advance. Wuxia. Most of you watching this have probably seen a Wuxia film, but aren't familiar with the term itself. The term, meaning martial hero, is a genre of Chinese literature involving the tales and tribulations taking place in the world of martial arts, known as the Jianghu. Common aspects of the Wuxia's story structure involve an early tragedy, with the protagonist learning a martial art, undertaking several trials and tribulations in the process. Another significant motif of Wuxia is the protagonist having a strong moral code, typically the tenets of the Sha, juxtaposed against an unjust or forgiving world. It is this sort of world that brings us the modern likes of Dynasty Warriors, Five Deadly Venoms, and today's review, Keen, The Warring States. Originally developed by Roman Jassir, apologies if I got that wrong, and Neko, and published later by Cubicle 7 in English, Keen, The Warring States is a Wuxia RPG running at 272 pages. As the name would suggest, the game is a historical fantasy RPG that takes place in the Warring States period, approximately 200 BC. If you've seen Hero, you might be a little bit familiar with this point in time, wherein the King of Qin was on the rise to unite the other states into a unified China. Much like our last review, Qin has a set of mini-stories between each chapter. However, instead of being loosely connected views on the world the game inhabits, the stories focus on a central character named Heart of Jade, following her tale of revenge in the beats of a classical Wuxia story. The book's pages have a parchment-like layout to them, and while it's certainly easy to read throughout the fluff, at times the pages can feel overly dense, like it's cramming too much into short spaces. The first few chapters are the introductory bits of the game, espousing on what an RPG is as well as the history of the game's setting, from creation myths to the current period of warring states. Oddly enough, at the end of the chapter, a set of pre-generated characters is given. This struck me as an odd move, since it breaks the book's flow and seems out of place. Usually this sort of thing would be after the creation section, not before it. Granted, the next chapter is about character creation, but it's the principle of the matter. Speaking of which, the next two chapters discuss creating characters and how the game plays. After creating the character's concept, the first step is to determine his five aspects, the core physical and mental attributes of the character, patterned after the five Chinese elements, metal, water, fire, wood, and earth. Starting characters have 14 points to spend across the attributes, ranging from 1 to 5, with the average baseline being 2 in each. The second step is to choose a gift and a weakness, owing to the yin-yang motif of the game. Typically, gifts will allow for a once-per-session reroll on a specific event or circumstance, while weaknesses are a bit more varied in their effects, ranging from GM-determined effects to forced rerolls. The third step is your character's skills, of which you have 15 points to spend on. However, Spending them is not a one-to-one -one basis like with the aspects, and they have a specific cost in points depending on the skill level. As a result, your characters in Keen will start out with a less broad skill base than at other games, for better or for worse. Bear in mind that your choice in skill will also determine what special abilities may be accessible to you. The fourth step is your character's special abilities, be they DAOs, combat techniques, or magic. Much like with skills, special abilities have a set cost for each level. Dao are the only special ability that is universally accepted, while the others are rooted in one's choice of skills. It's worth noting that Dao and Magic both use Ki, which acts as an MP pool for Keen. The final step is to determine your secondary aspects. Ki, Breath of Life, Keen's health system, Passive Defense, and Renown. Both Ki and Breath of Life use the character's balance statistic in their calculation which is based on the difference between its body aspects, metal and water, and its mind aspects, fire and wood. For key, this determines the character's basic key, which is then multiplied by the character's highest skill rating. For Breath of Life, a secondary characteristic called resistance, the character's ability to fight out poisons and illness, is factored in by the sum of his metal and earth aspects. These two formulae are combined to create the character's total Breath of Life, as well as how it will be distributed among his wound levels. Passive defense, a character's instinctive means of defending oneself from attack, is the sum of the character's water and wood aspects plus two. The final component is the character's renown, which is equal to their highest skill rating. Renown is a measure of how famous or infamous a character is from their deeds. 
The remaining parts of this chapter goes over aspects, skills, and the other core character abilities. The exception here is extra normal abilities, each of which will get their own section later on in the book. The next chapter details the core rules of the game. Despite Keen drawing heavily from the White Wolf School of Presentation, the game does not use a die pool. Instead, the game uses what it calls the yin-yang die, wherein you roll 2d10 and the difference between the die faces is your result. Rolling a pair, however, is treated as an automatic success at the margin rolled, and you regain chi equal to that number. This does not apply if you roll double zeros, which is an automatic failure along with losing 5 chi. Either way, the result is added to aspect and skill ratings to be compared against the target difficulty number. Also of note in this chapter is the combat system, which while it does use initiative in the standard manner, in this case using water, the number of actions is not standard across all participants, instead determined by the skill rating of the given skill they'll be using in that round, with one being the default otherwise. Both attacks and damage, regardless of range, use the metal aspect, with the weapons rating being a damage bonus. While this can certainly lead to dynamic flow of combat in the game, I would recommend the GM have a declaration round so we can hand out pennies or similar identifiers onto how many actions a given player has. The next few chapters cover the extra normal abilities characters may have. Dows, combat techniques, and magic. Dows are defined as the laws of the universe as dictated by heaven's mandate. Based in a world that is built on rules. By drawing in one's inner chi, these rules can be bent, or even broken. Mechanically, DAOs can be thought of as a simplified version of the charms from Exalted, each DAO having a range of effects leveled 1 to 6, though unfortunately only the first four are available in the core book. Activating a DAO counts as an action, requiring a number of chi equal to the DAO's level. Combat techniques are abilities that allow you to add additional effects to a melee or ranged attack. Unlike DAOs and magic, combat techniques do not cost chi. Instead, when using one for an attack, the difficulty of that attack is increased by one or more, depending on the technique. Combat techniques utilize the shared pool, but the available techniques at each skill level varies depending on the weapon skill utilizing it. For example, the two-weapon technique is a level 1 technique for daggers, but a level 4 one for swords. It should also be noted, obviously, that the pool of techniques is separated for melee and ranged weapons. Magic is similar to Dao's in the use of Qi, however the character must meet a few prerequisites in order to use magic. First, they must have at least one level in the Taoism skill. Second, they must have the corresponding skill level for the required skills. Beyond that, it's a matter of spending Qi and rolling the appropriate test as the magical effect indicates. Magic in Keen is divided into four categories. External alchemy, which is blending materials into potions, ointments, and talismans. Internal alchemy, which is using one's chi to manipulate the vital principles of the body. Divination, which is predicting the future using various methods of sight. And exorcism, which is the combating of spirits, undead, and demons. The only real downside to the way magic works is that it's dependent on multiple skills in a game where one's pool of available skills is less than other games running dangerously close to having a multiple ability dependency problem. The remainder of the player's section details the world of the warring states, from government to warfare to the finer details of the seven major states in the Zhang Guo. Additional attention is given to the daily life in this era, as well as the fringe world of the martial arts, as I mentioned before, the Zhang Ku. This material comprises the biggest bulk of the book, and while it is detailed, this does come at a price. Much of the material for mechanics comes off as shortened, while there is a lavish amount of detail given to the fluff. At times, this can come off as too much to take in all at once, especially since there's little in the way of story seeds given, as if they overcompensated with the accuracy in presenting this era. The tail end of this chapter contains equipment. Most of the weaponry involved consists of a damage bonus and its resilience, much as how armor only has a damage reduction value and a movement penalty. I can't say I'm entirely fond of this approach, since I prefer to have the weapons have unique characteristics in between each other, but it seems like that sort of uniqueness is relegated to DAOs and combat techniques, rather than the weapons itself. The GM section near the end of the book contains the game's bestiary as well as how experience points are gained and spent for players. In addition, Renown is discussed further as to how it's increased and used in play. Renown is the only time the yin-yang die isn't used. Instead, it's treated as a roll under percentile roll. At the end of the chapter is a sample adventure for three to four players and a glossary. The glossary is nice, and there is an index at the end, which definitely helps, but the adventure itself is just kind of eh. It's serviceable for something like Free RPG Day, but as far as getting people into the game and seeing what makes it unique, I don't think it fully is able to capture that.
In a time where accurate portrayal is the crux of critique for so many, Keen has that as both its strength and weakness. I did a bit of number crunching, and while about half of the book is dedicated to crunch, the way things are written it feels far less so. The character and crunch aspects are so summarized it's almost like one of those 24-hour projects at the Free RPG blog or at 1KM1KT. I respect the detail they put into getting the Warring States period right, but I feel like they did it in such an impenetrable way at times that it felt less like it was being written for a gaming group and more like the Ministry of Historical Accuracy. Compounding matters is the general lack of story seeds present in the book, aside from a few pages near the end, along with the aforementioned story. Ultimately, the problem here is a lack of connective tissue to help the GM and players get into this world apart from the usual fantasy fare. On the positive, the game is a very strong fit for groups that enjoy martial arts cinema or fantastical China, and the yin-yang motif is well established throughout the game. Additionally, it has a very modular approach if players want to be more low-key about the fantastic. It's definitely better at getting fantastic China down better than, for instance, Swords of the Middle Kingdom ever did. I just wish there was a more expanded crunch in places, like skill use and combat techniques to prevent overlap. Overall, I'd give Keen the Warring States an 8 out of 10.